is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and uh, I love Netflix Christmas movies. Hi, I'm Jax, and I'm so excited that this year I have the time to watch (laughs) Netflix Christmas movies. I'm Alonzo, and yeah, Netflix Christmas journeys are a ride. And this, and this is the Deck the Hallmark, the Deck the Hallmark podcast. podcast. Oh boy, another Friday, another opportunity to talk about uh, Christmas with uh, a couple of my favorite people. Alonzo Jacks, welcome back to the program. This is becoming a thing. Mm. It's true. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's a regular, it's a regular Friday night thing. It really is. I mean, what, who, who else would you rather spend Fridays with? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can, you. I can't think of anybody. Uh, we are talking Netflix today. Netflix announced their slate. And so since we still have, you know, no more Hallmark to talk about <laughs> a week out, <laughs> here we are talking about Netflix, but you know what? I'm okay with it because I imagine Alonzo probably sometime in 2022, we will uh, watch at least one of these together uh, for the, I, for the show. I would, I would like to think so. Certainly. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, heaven knows we, uh, well, I, I, frankly, I know that we have to do the, the, the princess switch uh, uh, third one and the, tragically the uh, christmas in california second one if only to you know close the loop right. on ones we've already talked about on the on the monday show we're completionist uh, there's yeah. nothing there's nothing we can do about it there's nothing yeah. we can do about it can't leave the, the can't leave that stuff hanging um Jax, you said it in your intro that you're going to have time this year what is your uh experience been like thus far with netflix christmas movies have you uh been able to to dive in um so no. Uh, the only one that I watched was uh, The Happiest Season. And that was Hulu. That was Hulu. Oh, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, um, uh, point so back, made. Back it up. Um, <laughs> the only non-Hallmark Christmas... The only non-Hallmark Christmas movie... TV one that I watched last season was the happiest season. There you go. That's so, a good, one. Um, good choice. <laughs> no, to answer, yeah, I did not watch any Netflix, but yes, it was a good choice to watch the happiest <laughs> season. I guess that I've not watched any Netflix. So, so you so haven't seen you, any Princess Switch movies with Vanessa Hudgens? No Christmas Prince? Wow. Oh, oh you Guys. have a bounty awaiting you. A bounty. <laughs> And it's uh, like stuff to catch up on, evidently. Yeah, because yeah, cause Christmas Prince is like that. It was so weird. Like you, you know, the three of us have been paying attention to Hallmark stuff for ages now, and then Christmas Prince landed on Netflix, and everybody's like, "What is this? Yeah. A royal Christmas rom com <laughs> with somewhat low budget uh, uh, production values? I've never seen the like." I'm like. <laughs> Y'all, there's a million of these every year. How did this one suddenly become the one that like broke the seal for like the mass of the movie going public? I'll never understand. Yeah. And and that was the one, the one of uh, like, just, it was just okay. But it was the one that really, uh, really made it happen. And then they, you know, did two other ones, of course, as you do. And then uh, I can't believe you haven't seen Princess Switch. They are just. The Hudge. Um, I, I know the thing is though, like I, I already saw Kenneth Kim Brace star turn where she played several of herself. So now I need to really dive in to Vanessa Hudgens doing, because I believe she's done three of herself, not just two and three is better than two. Now four would be better than three, but I don't think we're getting that in this one. Oh, this is the third movie. I don't know if we're getting a fourth Hudgens that remains yes. to be seen. Okay. According to the synopsis, we know just of three, but we'll see. You know what? Why not dream big, you know, and get a fourth V Hudge? Vanessa Hudgens saw that CCB movie and she was like, hold my eggnog. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Switch for Christmas. Switch, switch, please. Um, <laughs> 
And then, but the good news is, Jax, is you have, you can watch them and then you can listen to uh, Dyke the Hallmark because me, Alonzo, and Dan, we've covered those ones. The Princess, uh, the uh, Princess for Christmas. Is that what it's called? No, Something like that. <laughs> Princess Witch Christmas Prince. There it is. And then, <laughs> uh, and they kind of combine worlds for a second oh, as well. Yeah. These, the, 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 running joke with Hallmark movies or sorry with Netflix movies is very often people in a Netflix movie will watch another Netflix movie that you've already yeah. seen. So it's like, Oh wait, so if that movie exists within the universe and then later, if the characters actually pop up in each other's movies, like, so are those movies documentaries now in the universe <laughs> of the Netflix movies? It's yeah. It, okay. I'm so here for world yeah. building like yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they do that a little bit on Hallmark, but I always wanted them to do it more. And oh, yeah. I think that where is, this where's is the amazing. Julia Wise cinematic universe? We need <laughs> Thank that. Thank you so much. That's <laughs> exactly what we need. Right. It is what we need. Um, so here's what we're going to do because Netflix does this crazy thing where they do movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to cover uh, both of them in blocks. So we'll do all the movies together and then all the shows together. And we are going to rank them from excitement, uh, one to five peppermint mochas. And I will say, I'm going to give each of us five creams to use. Now, mm. for those that are new to the reviewing process, these creams mean nothing. <laughs> they add nothing to your excitement level, but you have five to use them as you please throughout the process. Do you think five is fair, Alonzo? I think, yeah, for a list like this, I think, I think five is, is okay. good. And uh, yeah, this is my first experience. I've watched the creams episodes uh, that, that <laughs> with you, Dan and Panda, but like yes. now it's now I, I have to wield them myself and it's a, it's a heady responsibility. It, well, it, it, yes. I, I just want to chime in and wholeheartedly agree with Alonzo, but I think that when I had listened to those episodes, I misunderstood that I thought the creams, because I like cream, I was mm -hmm. thinking that that actually added to my excitement. I think it it does in a is sense, okay? but it, yeah. yes, okay. I, it's an I, accentuation. Okay. It is, but it doesn't like if if you say five stars, it is five stars. But you can say five stars and a cream, and you know, kind of get over oh. that. Uh, yeah. Yes, it, it's like a little. It's just a little raising of the roof. It's like a little raising of the roof. I like that. Um, Let's start with November 1st, a Monday. Can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> the Claus family. Uh, I don't know uh, these people. Uh, starring uh, Jan De DeClaire, Mo Baker, Stefan. De De yep. <laughs> you know any of them, Alonzo? You, you I, see films. I, I don't. But the thing to remember about Netflix is that they are a global, you know, film apparatus, yes. you know. Uh, sadly, we are not getting a Squid Game Christmas this year, but we could. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I believe this is Scandinavian of some stripe or other. So this is this is one of several things that will be uh, dubbed into English or, you know, in the original language with subtitles if you want. So, yeah, I don't know who these folks are, but not to say that they aren't, you know, huge leading lights in their industry, wherever their industry might happen to be. Alonzo, I feel like I know the answer of this for you. I'll open this up to both of you. Mm -hmm. But if given the the choice between dubbed or subtitles with original language, <laughs> I imagine you're a subtitle boy. I am a subtitle boy. Um, you know, I, I I watch a lot of foreign films, and and I'll I'll tell you. Other countries got really good over the years at dubbing um, mm -hmm. because, frankly, the hegemony of the American film industry crammed so much of our own product down their throats for both film and TV. They got very good at dubbing stuff. Whereas we have never quite picked up well, that well on that trick. So it's always a little awkward. And uh, frankly, I, I think once you get used to subtitles, you're used to subtitles and it becomes weird not to. I think I know a lot of people think, uh, oh, I don't want to read a movie, but there's something about hearing somebody in an ADR studio as opposed to the actual actor doing the thing in the moment uh, that I think makes a real difference. And I think that there's a quality in the performance that you can respond to, even if you don't know what the words mean as they're coming out of the mouth. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a subtitles all the way. I will say this though. I know there are anime fans who are also very vehement about that, but I think animation is different because 
all animation is dubbed, let's face it. Um, so I, I, you know, that one I'm a little less stringent on. I generally will watch the original version with subs then even. But if you want to watch a dubbed cartoon, you will be watching a dubbed cartoon, whatever language you pick. <laughs> Jax, do you feel the same? Okay, so I have a much less refined take on it. I also would prefer subtitles, but I watch Bachelor in Paradise with subtitles. I just watch things with subtitles. So, yeah, I Me, find, me too, because everybody yeah. mumbles on TV now, so you got to yeah. get those captions on. Yes. Yeah. I am the same way. I do watch everything with uh, subtitles, mainly because I watch a lot of TV in my room with a baby like adjacent. So it's, you just got to be careful. But it should co also come as no surprise that if there is a dubbed version, I will take part in that. And in my experience, uh, I'm it doesn't uh, take a. I get used to that just as quickly as I get used to subtitles. So I can do both ways. I've seen some foreign things with that dub. But if there's a dub, let's just make it a little easier on brand and uh, j <laughs> just. Just, just hear it. That's all I'm saying. So um, this, I looked it up. This is this, this pr production we're talking about is uh, Belgian, and it, it is a ooh. Dutch language movie. But here's okay. the here's the nutty thing. According to IMDb, there is a Klaus Family Two coming out this year. So I guess we're getting this one a little late, and then there's a sequel that's going to open in Belgium, and then maybe next Christmas we'll get it. Interesting. So perhaps we're a year behind uh, I, the Dutch. Uh, yes. Uh, the you know what that means? You got to close the loop next year on that. <laughs> You're exactly committed. Right. I, I am. Well, if we were really committed, we would watch this and then fly to to Belgium, <laughs> and. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what the budget holds. Uh, synopsis. When his grandfather suddenly falls ill, Holiday hating Jules learns of his family's magical legacy and realizes he's the only hope to save Christmas. I will go first because I do love magic. Um, and I, I'm a, uh, I'm a lover of, of Santa. Uh, do I do Santa in my family? No, but I love Santa as a character. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this. I love when people hate Christmas and then they find the Christmas spirit. I'm all in on that. I'm going to go four stars, uh, four no peppermint creams. mochas, four peppermint mochas, no creams. Jax? Um. I'm not trying to copycat you, but I also feel strongly that I am for peppermint mochas, no creams on wow. this one. Although if I was at Starbucks and I could get an, a little extra squirt of peppermint, I might do it. No, I we're not doing not squirts. <laughs> we're not <laughs> doing squirts, Jax. All right, we fine. Are, All right, we, I'm complicating we, things. You said we I are, have creams and I yes. also need to add squirts. No, we are a cream show. We're not yes. a squirt show. <laughs> the, other, no. the, the other podcasts and have the squirts. We're not doing. <laughs> we're not doing that. We're a squirt free zone. No <laughs> special oh, orders. That's right. Um, oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe and say three peppermint mochas. I, I'm with you. I do like a, I do like a, a Santa exists, and this is a whole Klaus family, uh, which could be really cool. Um, but that is to say, if I watch this one and really dig it, then I will probably go higher on the mochas when we get Klaus family two uh, on our shores. Oh, oh nat naturally, naturally. Uh, the next one is uh, Love Hard. Love Hard. I don't know if this is a Die Hard situation. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but it's coming out uh, Friday, November 5th. It's got some other leads that I don't know who they are either. Um, Nia Dobrev. I, from Vampire that? Diaries. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And a Degrassi alum. <laughs> the amount of times. <laughs> look, I hear you bring up Degrassi. It's look, De Degrassi is a Canadian feeder into movies like this. You know, yes. it's, it's like it's like it's, it's their charm school before they graduate <laughs> into making Christmas <laughs> features that are shot in Vancouver. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> the synopsis is this hopeless, romantic, but eternally single L.A. journalist Natalie uh, thinks things are beginning to look up when she swipes right on a dreamy guy from the East Coast named Tag. Tag is his name. <laughs> Taking a leap of faith, she jumps on a flight to surprise her crush from for the holidays, only to discover that she's been catfished by Tag's childhood friend, who's equally unlucky in love, named Josh. This lighthearted romantic comedy chronicles her attempt to reel in 
love. Oh boy. That is fun. Uh, Jax, I'll start with you. Oh, 100%. This is the one that I'm most excited about. Five peppermint mochas, three creams. Um, no, I no love you, can, the- you have to use one cream at a time, Jax. <laughs> so many rules. One cream at a time. <laughs> Spread out the creams. Spread out the creams. Uh, Five peppermint mochas. One cream. Since I follow Uh, the rules. How about how about I give you a squirt as well? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I get a squirt. Okay, yes, just to make up for it. We're breaking all the rules here. Okay, (laughs) then absolutely. Thank you. This is the one I'm the most excited about. I when I was single, I loved online dating. I loved the concept of catfishing. I love that this is a catfishing story. I'm excited about this cast. I think it's going to be one of the biggies for Netflix, and I'm so excited. To be clear, you love like the concept. Like you don't act a, you don't actively love <laughs> love catfishing or being the catfish. You just think the ideas. Oh, oh no. No, no. <laughs> My dream was that someone would use a photo of me to catfish. <laughs> No one ever did. And also, when I was dating, I was always secretly hoping I would show up and it would be a different person entirely, and it never was. <laughs> so now that I'm getting married, those days are in the rear view mirror. Uh, but if they weren't, I would thank you actually for that clarification. No, I was always fascinated by the concept of what would happen if I was catfished? Do you just them. really want to meet them. Nev or something? Is that what this is about? <laughs> also, yes. Yes, okay. Nev is yes. great. I, I will say, um, you know what? You, I, I would love for on your wedding day, you to walk down the aisle and then it's just somebody completely different and it's just been this whole thing. And <laughs> it's a whole realization. You're like, oh my Psych. gosh. Psych. <laughs> it's a catfish wedding. That's brilliant and beautiful. Can you write a movie about it? I'll write a, I'll write a movie about uh, it. Uh, happily ever catfished. Uh, uh, Alonzo? Uh, I'm going to go four. I, I, I don't I have not quite a Jackson level of, of thrills, but I, I do think this has a lot going for it. Nina Dobra, very charming. Um, it We have uh, Harry Shum Jr. from uh, from Glee also. Uh real fun and and you know not a chore to look at so uh yeah I, i'm in i think this could be fun it should come as no surprise that i do love a good catfish um whenever i'm like <laughs> i like a, a catfish like, po boy yeah 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 <laughs> whenever i'm like um in a hotel or traveling i watch shows that i don't normally watch because i have like cable and i always go to mtv to see if catfish is on but it's always ridiculousness and i'm like oh man that's too bad but uh i do like catfish and uh the the act i don't really like the fish um but i'm very excited this one sounds like a lot of fun i am gonna play it a little bit safe on this i'm gonna go four with a cream though to make up for lost time that i might have Okay. Later on in the road. Uh, Father Christmas is back is the next one. It's coming out Sunday, November 7th with Elizabeth Hurley, John Cleese, and Kelsey Grammer. Uh, The synopsis is four feuding sisters get a crash course in family togetherness when their long lost father shows up for Christmas at their posh ancestral manor. So there you go. Alonzo. (laughs) Here's the thing. Uh, Four angry sisters, I'm all for because uh, yeah, I'm the youngest of seven. I come from a huge family. So I love I love a, a, a big family Christmas. I love a bickery family Christmas. I love a dysfunctional family Christmas. My family is weirdly functional. We all like each other. But I like watching movies where uh, families like totally like rip at each other and then work it all out in time for Christmas. However, both Kelsey Grammer and John Cleese are people who I have in my life been real fans of and who in recent years have just gotten on my nerves and and turned into very humorless old men who say stupid, stupid things. And so it's hard for me to enjoy them on the level of, of sheer performance. So 
balancing those two things out, I think I am left sadly with a with a mere two peppermint mochas for this one. Zero wow. creams. Wow. I'll go uh, opposite of you. I actually get a kick out of angry old men, but I don't care for bickering families. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not excited about this. I'll go one, one. This just seems boring to me. I'm going to go one star, no creams. I'm sorry. One peppermint mocha. Jack. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. So I think that I'm going to go. Is it okay to say I was carrying the tray of four peppermint mochas, but then I sort of stumbled and a little bit went out of each cup? That's <laughs> so how I'm feeling so, about that. So minus a slosh. Is what yeah, you're minus a slosh. Except, thank you. Yeah, four peppermint mochas minus a slosh. Love the idea of four sisters. Uh, oh, the Kelsey grammar thing makes me go, huh, that's interesting i don't really care that it's him but okay like maybe so i'm interested enough but the four sisters intrigue me that yeah i mean i, I i'll watch it is it a plus or minus that the character's last names is christmas oh i didn't know that minus for me <laughs> yeah i think I, I, I might be down to one and a half mochas now oh uh, yeah, i'm, uh, it's, me, I'm it, it, it's giving me a plus i i am <laughs> still i know i am years into this game i still love a good christmas name like play wait i'm sorry i need clarification though for Milanzo. um did you say their last name is christmas Yes, so Father Christmas Father is their Christmas. dad. No, I, okay, I'm going to stand by it again, but I'm going to double down and say that ain't cute. I love it when they do it on Hallmark when it's Noel or Holly. Merry Christmas Eve. Holly. It's cute. It's a very clear nod. We all know it. I'm in for it. This is not a nod. This is so on the nose that <laughs> this I'm... This is a nudge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In the ribs. Yeah. You all are Scrooges. I love it. Uh, um, okay, here we go. I'm excited to see where Jax goes with this. The Princess Switch 3, Thursday, November 18th. Vanessa Hudgens times three. When a, uh, a priceless relic is stolen, similar to the last one, C Queen Margaret and Princess Stacy. Hudgens, Hudgens. Enlist the help of Margaret's audacious lookalike cousin, Fiona Hudgens, who teams with a dashing, mysterious man from her past to retrieve it, rekindling the sparks of a tantalizing Christmas romance and resulting in a very unexpected switch. <laughs> But the switch oh. is expected. No, no, no. <laughs> Only by the audience. <laughs> oh, that's right. oh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay, cool, yes. cool, cool. No, they, they promise to never do it again. But the, oh, they, absolutely. We, they, we've, the we've last, put them in We mean position. it this time. Yes. Mean, Alonzo, where are you at? <laughs> Okay, I loved the first Princess Switch. I thought it was I, I thought it was a real hoot. And the second one strained a bit but was i was still on board for it i maintained a, a decent level of goodwill and i kind of like a, the idea of a threequel because that's that's usually either where thing it, basically threequels are where things go off the rails and it's either off the rails in a good way or in the bad way i'm gonna assume i'm gonna keep my fingers crossed i'm gonna keep christmas hope alive that it's gonna go off the rails in a good way so i'm gonna say four mochas and a cream Wow. I like that a lot, Jax. Um, I know that it's probably silly to say this because I haven't watched any of the other two and I know that I have homework to do, but I am going to give this five full mochas. I'm not going to add a cream. I'm not going to take away with sloshes. I know, I know enough to know. And I like Vanessa Hudgens just that, cause I think she's a cutie. I haven't really watched her in much, but I think that I know this is going to be one of the biggies. So it makes me intrigued to watch it. So my level of anticipation is there. I just don't know how I'm going to feel about it when it actually shakes out. Like this is, this is Netflix's what Godwink evergreen. I don't even know. Like this is their franchise when it comes to this stuff. And also, like, but like Vanessa is their CCB like for sure. Comes, yeah. like she's, she's the one. Um, and it's for that reason that I'm a little 
I'm bummed that we're doing it again in that like, I want to see her do something else in this space. Like I like, I had a lot of fun with uh, the night before Christmas, the, the other one she did, that's not this. And so I was hoping for a little something different, but she- I'm so I'm sorry, Bran. She's over here orphaning, you know, the show orphan black. Where you know, yeah, yeah. Playing, no, yeah, yeah. Mazel is like playing eight characters. You want more from Hudgens than no? I just three want. I wanted. Uh, yeah, no, I should clarify. I I'm wanted teasing. a different. Uh, I want. Yes, I did want more. The uh, night before Christmas. That's night with a K, Jax. Yes. It's a time travel thing. Yes. It's a delight. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah, get the smelling salt. I can tell you're gonna think. <laughs> um. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three one for each Hudgens Fair um enough. and I and I will say this and we talked about it on the pod but she does each of these characters very well yes. it is a treat to watch it's 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 a it's a it's an acting um uh, showcase uh, clinic clinic showcase yeah <laughs> it, it's it's great but because I just she- Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was saying she does three different characters, but she also is really good at having them pretend to be another one. Yeah. So like she'll be the American one pretending to be the fancy one or the one pretending to be the punky one and you get it. And it's, it, it all comes through. It's uh, like, again, CCB is twins, barely even trying. Uh, barely Vanessa even trying. Hudgens is doing three. It's, th- there's so much going on there. Yes. You know what? I'm going to go three and a half, uh, Mocha's now that we've okay. talked about it. And I think I will use my cream on this. This is a good usage of cream because I, I just want to say that I did it on this one, you know, like sure. that little extra. Cause I think this one could have it because of, uh, the, the previous two, you know, and who mean? knows, will they, will they spring a fourth Hudgens on us in this movie? If, if <laughs> they, if they spring a fourth one, uh, I mean, all bets are off. Give, give me like, just buy out of Starbucks, you know, like all, <laughs> all, 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 all the peppermint mochas at this point. Right. I eventually wanted to be like, Brand, have you ever watched that movie being John Malkovich? I know the name. Yes. <laughs> so where, you know, the people get to go through a, a weird door and suddenly they live life as John Malkovich for 30 minutes or something. And then when Malkovich goes through the door, he's in this like piano bar and every single other person there looks like him. And just, all they ever say is Malkovich. I think we're eventually going to get to that point with Vanessa Hudgens where the entire cast is Vanessa Hudgens and they just say Vanessa Hudgens for two hours. <laughs> right. And I would be in for that. <laughs> yes. Me as well. Um, Shall we move on? Yes. A Boy Called Christmas. This is coming out the day before Thanksgiving, Wednesday, November 24th. I believe that this is like last year they had, what was the big one, Alonzo? Uh, Jingle Uh, Jangle? Jingle Jangle. This is like the theatrical Christmas movie that they're doing this year. Uh, It's got a lot of names, uh, names that you will know. Uh, Synopsis is an ordinary young boy called Nicholas sets out on an extraordinary adventure into the snowy north in search for his father, who is on a quest to discover the fabled village of the elves, Elfhelm. Uh, taking with him a uh, headstrong reindeer called Blitzen, I know that name, uh, and a loyal pet mouse, Nicholas soon meets his destiny in this magical comic and endearing story that proves nothing is impossible. Adapted from the best-selling book by Matt Haig. Let's talk about it. I'll start with you, Jax. Um, hmm... Who are the big names in this? I don't Maggie know much. Smith, Kristen oh, Wiig. Maggie Smith. Oh, uh, Sally uh, Hawkins, Toby oh. Jones. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, so, Jim Broadbent. I'm so sorry. I didn't do my research. <laughs> I didn't know Maggie Smith and Kristen Wiig were going to be. Oh, I got to get my creams back. Uh, <laughs> I see why I had to see, save them. Yeah, that's um, exactly right. Okay. Exactly whew, right. I got to breathe through this. Anything with Maggie Smith. I'm in. I'm done. Uh, five peppermint mochas and uh, a cream. Alonzo. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a total five mochas on this one. Um, not a cream only because I'm saving it for one other one that's coming up later that is that I, that has to stand above. But whatever squirts you want to throw in, for sure, five <laughs> peppermint mochas, no question. Uh, yeah, this is, this is one that they started kind of 
teasing a year ago. Yeah. And, and uh, I have not read the book that it's based on, but people love them. I think it's part of a series. And yeah, this is, this is clearly the big prestige. Yeah. Like they'll probably, it will probably open theatrically as well. Probably going to get at least Oscar shortlisted in tech categories, the way that jingle jangle was, this mm -hmm. is the big thing of the year. And, and yeah, I, I'm very excited. I'm also very excited about it. I, I have been hearing about this one for a year and uh, it just looks, it, it has a, a look to it from the, the uh, poster and just the stills that we've seen. It has a Christmas look to it. I don't yeah, know how lush. else to explain it. Lush. Um, so I'm very excited. I'm going to go five and I'll give a cream. Five and a cream. I mean, I, so, so sue me. <laughs> I'm a simple man. Um, let's take um, a, a quick break and then we'll come back. Uh, uh, we'll be right back. Here, Dr. Albert. Oh, what a great break that was. Am I right, everybody? Boy, oh, oh boy. Uh, a castle for Christmas. Friday, November 26th. Black Friday, you do your shopping, and then you come home and you watch a castle for Christmas uh, with Brooke Shields and uh, Carrie, uh, what, do you, what do you, Elvis, Elvis. You know him uh, from The Princess Bride, Bran. Oh, good. I do like that. Um, <laughs> famed author Sophie Brown travels to Scotland hoping to buy a small castle of her own, but the prickly owner, Duke Miles, is reluctant to tell, sell to a foreigner. Working to find a compromise, the pair constantly buy heads but they just may find something more than they were expecting mm -hmm. uh alonzo i mean come on scottish castle with brook shields and carrie elwis uh, i mean uh, i i want i i can't even i was i can't stop before i have to go five i have to go five mochas on this like wow this, this is this is, if we're going to slot these based on what Netflix has done in the past, this is their Kristen Davis and uh, Rob Lowe in the middle of Africa movie, but it's with, uh, for me, more appealing leads and uh, in a Scottish castle. So yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I agree with that. I, uh, I mean, I have questions like, why is she trying to buy a castle? Um, but I don't. Is really... his name Duke or is his title Duke? <laughs> also a question. <laughs> so I always like when a synopsis makes me wonder, and so this is what's happening here. Uh, I'm very intrigued by this movie. Uh, I'm not as much of a castle boy as my friend Panda is. Panda's mm. a big castle boy, uh, big castle royal. Freak, some might say. Yeah, and some might say big royal boy. I'm kind of whatever about that whole thing, but I do like Scotland, and I do like that whole thing. So um, I'm gonna go uh, for four. I think I've used two creams. I'm gonna I'm gonna just do four. Four peppermint mochas, Jax. Okay, um, I'm gonna say I, it's not that I have anything against this. I am just not particularly excited about it. Wow. You know, I, I am gonna go with um, three peppermint mochas. Brooke Shields is great. I never watched the entirety of Princess Bride. I know, I know every man I've ever dated. I know I get that look. I know. Inconceivable. Shame. <laughs> Thank you. For shame. For I, shame. I, I always know. like to say I envy you getting to see it for the first time. Um, <laughs> what do you mean I you haven't have, seen I it in its entirety? What do you I, mean? Well, um, I okay. If we're getting into it, I you know I I may have uh, when you tell when you were dating men. Sometimes they do this thing where they're like, you've never seen that. Mm. You've got to see it. And then they try and show it to you. And then you don't really like it. But I didn't give it a chance. I, I hear you. I hear you. If there's any context that can ruin a movie, it's some dude being like, <laughs> I can't believe you've never seen blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You, you, the entire movie becomes a mansplanation. And yeah, it's yes. not. Were you, were you like already on the, like on the cards about this guy? Like you didn't really like him. You were just doing him a favor. 
Oh, was he on the way uh, out the door? Okay, these are these. This is an archetype. This was at least three or four guys that have done this. Like, you haven't seen Braveheart? You haven't seen Princess Bride? I can't believe you. Well, no, the Sandlot I love, so I'm taking that out. But that was one where I was like, okay, no, I love the Sandlot. Um, no, so I'm just not particularly excited. Also, like the castle thing in in a world where if we're going to get into it with like, you know, wealth hoarding, I don't think anyone needs to be buying a castle. I know we escape for these movies. I'm not judging her, but less excited about buying a castle than I am about catfishing or say Maggie <laughs> Smith or say Vanessa Hudgens rock in my world. Think of all the sweaters, though, Jax. Scotland at Christmas. Okay, well now, all right, well now you're pumping me up. You're, uh, you're, Alonzo. It's like you know me, and you know the way to my heart. And now you're pumping me up to making it four. I don't think you need to do that. I, th- you know what, I will say. Vote with your heart. I'm not your, here to. I will allow you to skip this movie. If you promise to watch Princess Bride with an open mind, no one else around. You just do it by yourself. No one's going to talk you through it. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was just laughing uh, at the way you described that to me. It sounded really uh, soothing and frankly, quite appealing. And Thank you. yes, I, I will uh, approach it at your own speed. That's right. On your own level and with no pressure whatsoever, I think you'll be delighted. Oh, man, you guys, I don't know if you're doing this on purpose, but I hope you are. The way Always. you're describing this. Mm. We're sensitive. And what can I tell you? We yeah. are sensitive. Anybody want a peanut? Um, <laughs> all right. You, you ready to, to, to continue on? Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're into December now. Um, and we've got some uh, heavy hitters, including California Christmas coming up. Um, single All the Way, coming out on Thursday, December 2nd. Uh, Michael Yuri, um, Luke McFarlane, maybe you've heard of him. Uh, synopsis, desperate to avoid his family's judgment about his perpetual single status, Peter uh, convinces his best friend Nick to join him for the holidays and pretend that they're now in a relationship. But when Peter's mother sets him on a blind date with her handsome trainer, James, the plan goes awry. Alonzo, I'll start with you. This will come to the surprise of no one. This is my five peppermint mochas and a cream. Because what? come on. You could not you you could not make a movie in a lab that I would be more excited to see. I mean, like Michael Yuri and Luke McFarlane, huge fans. Philemon Chambers, new dude, don't know where he comes from. I, I I thought, is he from Broadway? Is he a model? I don't know what his story is, but he's a smoke show. And so I totally want to see him in the mix of this thing. You've got Jennifer Coolidge and Kathy Najimy and Barry Bostwick as your comedy relief elders. You have a fake boyfriend <laughs> plot. I am in, I am in, I am in. Yeah, I I mean, I uh, before I even knew anything else, when I read the first sentence, I knew it was setting up for a fake, fake relationship. And I knew Alonzo would be in immediately. The guy loves himself a good fake relationship. The way Panda loves a royal family, I love a fake fiance. It is a great, <laughs> it, is, it is a great trope. It is a trope that I'm not tired of at all. Um, I love Luke McFarlane. I'm excited to see him in this role. Um, being in Hallmark movies, um, where he is falling in love with women a lot. Uh, it'll be interesting to see him in this role. Yeah. And we're going to see more of more of it next year with his movie with Billy Eichner and stuff like that. Bros, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see this for him. And it does sound just great overall. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'll go, I'll go, uh, you know what? I'll go five and a cream as well. Nice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> five and a cream um i'm gonna i agree with the smoke show situation um but i do just have to as alonzo put so well with our with our comedy legends here jennifer coolidge in my mind can do no wrong she's hilarious and kathy i mean i remember with my friends watching hocus pocus and like everyone was like well i want to like 
my friends who were really outgoing and popular and knew they could do the Bette Midler one want to do the Bette Midler one we were singing. And then like the hot girls always wanted <laughs> to be Sarah Jessica Parker. So I learned how to like do my little like, you know, mouth <laughs> thing that Kathy right. does so well in this that I I've identified with her since early Hocus Pocus days. Nice. So yeah, I am all in on this bad boy. If it turns out that Luke McFarlane is a trainer who also plays the cello on camera, <laughs> forget about uh, it. Get me oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> forget You're not about gonna it. Be okay. You're not going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, I'm interested. I, I, like, I want to know because he's doing a a, a a hallmark as well. Pretty yeah, early yeah, the, in the season. The first weekend. He's yeah. doing the, the 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 first Saturday on uh, movies and mysteries. So you do get a nice little gap. But Hallmark, I feel like, has never really played nicely with actors that try to do something like another Christmas thing in particular. Um, like, hey, I'm Andrew Walker. I'm going to go do a Lifetime with Bethany Joy Lenz. And then we've never seen them back on Lifetime again. Like, it's very interesting. So I, I, the, question double dipping. I, the question I have is, is, will this be the last we see Luke McFarlane on Hallmark? Be, not only because of this Netflix, but also uh, the Billy Eichner and... Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I, that, this is, he's the weird, he's a, he's a, he's a, the, a strange sort of um, variable for this experiment because he's also, I think, because he's doing this Billy Eichner movie, his career is clearly taking off in a direction after which he could very be like, oh gosh, I would love to do more Hallmark, but I'm so busy, you know? So I don't, I, I, I honestly don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say there's no way in the world that Hallmark wouldn't take him back after this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Which I think we've seen in other cases where that may have been the case. If we're if we're getting our sleuthing hats on here, but no, I, I think. But I think Alonso's exactly right. I think he's getting to do. Um, yeah, I think he's a rising star and deservedly so. I mean, he's an incredible actor. And um, from what I gather, human being and everyone who's worked with him loves working with him. So, yeah, I just I want all good things for that man. And he did made you, that uh, very cool wooden ornament for the Deck of did. Hallmark guys. With he did. He made a really cool. Uh, did you get to interview his him? Hands. Did you get to interview him, Jax? I did. Yeah, yeah. he's a delight. Yeah, he's he's very funny, very down to earth. And he went to this is why I like him. I mean, yeah, I smoke show, but not really for me. He's not my uh, he's not my physical type. I say that like one, I would ever have a chance with him or like I would have a chance with <laughs> any man who looked like that, even if he was attracted to you know, weird little girls from the cold region. But uh, but I will say that that um I just I I I've got a thing about actors who are have theater training, and he does. And he I does just, have that. I, he went to yeah, Juilliard. I'm into it. I'm into it. Weird little girls from the coal region. That's going to be the title of your uh, your <laughs> memoir, your autobiography, and other stories. <laughs> yes, and other stories. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. David and the Elves. This is a foreign flick, correct, Alonzo? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to find stuff about it on like the IMDb page literally just says plot under wraps. Well, um, I have I have a plot. Oh, okay, um, right. Okay. No, it, it I just want, I couldn't tell if it was live action or animated. It is live action. It is live action. I can't pronounce a name, so that's always a good sign. Uh, but it is coming out Monday, December 6th. And also me not being able to pronounce the name doesn't mean anything. Um if unless it's Joe. I'm pretty much out. Uh, Christmas is drawing near, but it's not a happy time for David. After moving to a big city, I like to know that the big city trope is good around the world. Am I right, guys? It's just good to know. It's not yeah, just like in, in this case, I think the big city might be Warsaw, but you know, same difference. That's exactly right. Uh, after moving to a big city, his parents uh, have been bogged down with work and have forgotten the meaning of Christmas. David decides to change that together with Albert the elf who escaped from the land of Santa to figure out what Christmas is all about. David sets off to the Tatra Mountains, where his grandparents live, on a journey full of adventures, they are followed by David's parents and Santa, who completely 
don't get the modern world. There is a lot in this synopsis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just, just so we're clear here, this is not just runaway elf learns about, you know, how the world works and like, you know, dispirited big city people learn how Christmas works. Santa has to learn how the world works as well. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on here. There's a kid who's distressed, an elf who's left the North Pole, a Santa coming to rescue who doesn't know what's going on. It, there's a lot. to, And so I'm going to start, and I'm going to say I'm very intrigued by this movie. It has a lot of elements of things that I like a lot. Um, from like, you know, some classic Christmas specials and stuff like that. Like things come to mind, uh, like Santa coming down in a year without a Santa Claus and mm-hmm. like having to deal with that and the elves and stuff. So that's all playing good for me. So I'm very intrigued by it. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm actually I have two creams left. I don't know. I don't I can't use it here. I'm, I'm going to go right down the middle with three, three peppermint mochas. But it's a very intrigued three peppermint mochas like they got a little extra spice to them if you will so maybe some cinnamon on top <laughs> Jax. um yeah i'm also a three peppermint mocha level for this one sans cinnamon or splashes or squirts i'm uh, i just uh, you know I like my brain is okay to work a little harder when I'm watching a mystery, but usually when I'm wanting to watch these Christmas movies, I'm wanting to turn off a little. And this does sound like it might be a complex world for me to navigate open to it, open to it, but you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a three as well. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the, the sort of not only kind of, one upping of the usual plots that we get in this sort of thing and those kind of familiar tropes. But it's always interesting to see these tropes that we know as filtered through the way other cultures celebrate Christmas and the way other cultures depict Santa. Um, because I think there's a lot of details there that we take for granted. And then suddenly it's like, Oh no, no, the uh, Santa lives here and he, you know, wears this and this is how his mode of transportation is. Like it, it, it does differ quite a bit from country to country. Also, and you're going to miss this if you're listening to the podcast. I did look it up. Check out this cardigan on Santa. I need this cardigan in my life. Oh wait, is that from this? Okay, well, that is from right. this. Now you're changing the game, Alonzo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, um. I know. Are we? Are you upping your mocha? Yeah, thing? it might be four now. Like I can't <laughs> not be excited about seeing that. Okay, this is. I'm four. That <laughs> picture. Yeah. That picture looks like they snap Santa in a therapy session. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> He looks, a little, he looks a little distraught, but I, and the hat's great too. So the hat, it's a great hat. It's a, it's yeah. a sleepy time hat. I feel like a little bit, but it's, it's also, it's a Santa cap with, without the fur lining. It's just a strict red wool, but with a nice poofy, you know, ball at the end. And yeah, I, I, so I, sartorially, this movie is already like, you know, hitting all the beats. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, all right. We only got a few more left for the movies and then we'll, we'll head over to the TV zone. Uh, oh, here we go. Everybody, a California Christmas city lights. Now this is a California Christmas too. Uh, for those of you playing at home, uh, Thursday, December 16th, uh, just in time for Christmas. Uh, I know you guys were worried you're going throughout your holiday season. You're having a lot of fun. You're like, oh man, how can it get worse? Uh, they figured it out. So here we go. Um, uh, it's starring the guy, the guy and the girl uh, that are married in real life. Uh, it's been a year since Callie and Joseph fell in love and they're happier than ever running their dairy farm and their winery until business and family obligations calls them back to the city and threatens to derail their romance. I'll start. Zero, zero peppermint <laughs> mochas for this. Not only, not oh. only does it sound boring on, fa- uh, you know, just the surface, but having sat through the first one, where um, I had to watch a guy have an envelope of the truth in his back pocket and say, "I'm not going to tell you the truth," instead we are going to make the love. 
I'm not while you think I'm someone while, else. While you think <laughs> I'm someone else. I'm not excited about this movie. I can't believe we're doing a second one. <sighs> zero peppermint mochas for Bran. Uh, I, I join you on the zero mochas. That that first one is an abomination. It's one of the worst of these movies I've ever seen. And I've seen quite a few of them at this point. Um, yeah, ridiculous, bad amateurish just this like clumsy and 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 cruddy looking and and what they're doing what they're doing the first one was so like you know city mouse comes to the country and all they could think of for the sequel is country mouse goes to the city and i hate these mice and i would like them both to be caught in a trap um and set to flee free in the woods to not bother me anymore so yeah zero mochas now, Jax, you haven't seen A California Christmas. You can watch it on Netflix. You can listen to our episode that we did earlier this year. If well, you want after to. those rave reviews, I will <laughs> certainly not be doing that. Only well, listen to our up. episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, no, no. I do that anyway when I don't watch the movies. But the, um, the follow-up questions I have uh, quickly, because I'm not that interested in this one now. I'll give it, I'll give it one, because actually you guys have made me want to watch it more <laughs> than just <laughs> Alonzo, would it be one of the glue traps that it the country mouse, city mouse suffers in, or one of the ones that just kills them immediately? I no. want to know. I was, one I of was, Jack's <laughs> follow-up questions is, how do you want the mice to die? <laughs> I was being very compassionate. I was going to catch them in one of those little metal things where the door closes on them, oh. and then you take them out into the woods and you let them go. And ideally, they don't find their way back to a movie camera. <laughs> I love you and I stand for that. And Bran, the only reason why I even added in the one peppermint mocha is the whole bit you did about making love with the thing in the back pocket. I was like, I didn't want to watch this, but then Bran's comedic <laughs> rendition of something that happened in the first one is now intriguing me. So you guys have made me get this one peppermint mocha by your you know, tete-a-tete banter, whatever you want to say. All I'm going to say is you, it, it, you, you're watching this Christmas movie and she, they, they are out in the vineyard and they're about to get, you know, familiar with one another. And all you're doing is you're sitting there on the couch saying, he's not who you think he is. Yeah, like and he, this would this would be the moment where he confesses everything, and then she gets mad and walks off. No, 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 no! no they switch it up. He they holds do, it. He holds it do, in his back pocket. They do the it, but like she is completely unaware as to like his, the, the his true identity or the nature of his why he's even there, and it's just like, <gasps> what are we doing here? The, yeah, at the and, end. They, and she forgives him. But does she at least else. give affirmative, enthusiastic consent? Yes, so she they does. Did, they cleared that one very low bar. She gives cons- consent to the person who she thinks she's giving consent exactly. to. Well, that's she- all we can ever do, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have a point. Sure. Uh, Nonetheless. No, I, I, the, the moral of this story is for now on, consent, yes, and then also... Check ID. Do you have any secrets? <laughs> like, as far as your identity goes. Are you who you think... Are you... Are who you, I think who, you are. Who do you think you are? <laughs> I am. Oh gosh. All right. Moving on to grumpy Ooh. Christmas. Cause mm. you'll, you will be that after you watch that yeah. movie. Um, this movie's for Good Dan, segue. I guess. Um, <laughs> Wednesday, December 22nd. Man, we are just getting down to it, huh? Uh, this is another foreign flick. It's a sequel to the 2016 comedy hit. Un Padre, no tan Padre. How'd I do? Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Don, this person, uh, and his extended hippie family travel to the beach to spend Christmas with uh, Alma's aunt, a demanding older woman who becomes Don's ultimate nemesis. When his position in the family is challenged, Don will stop at nothing to prove that Alicia is a horrible person. <laughs> who only looks out for herself, meaning it can ruin Christmas for everyone. I'll be honest. I'm intrigued. Don't know what's happening. Never saw Un Padre, Tan Padre, whatever it was called. Uh, it was apparently, re- I just looked it up on IMDb. It was released in the U.S. under the title The Patriarch, but I did not see it either. 
didn't see it, uh, but I am intrigued by the storyline. But because I, I have no uh, emotional attachment to the first one, I don't think I can go higher than one peppermint mocha. I'm going to go two, uh, just because I think there is something of a Mexican comedy renaissance that's happening right now, at least in terms of what we're getting to see in the U.S. Uh, you know, the, there I think in the last decade, we've probably had more Mexican comedies make it to a, a broader U.S. audience, both theatrically and via streaming. And so, you know, there's some interesting stuff happening there. Tempered with the idea that... Um, Christmas sequels to non-Christmas movies. I- I'm thinking the Friday after next, uh, you know, don't necessarily that, that that's often like a, we have no idea what else to do. We'll make it the holidays. So I'm going to say one and a half. It's fair. Jax. It too. And I don't really have a lot to say about it other than the fact that like, Okay, I'm not put off by it, but I'm not particularly intrigued. Yes, yes. Did you give a number? A two. Two, two, two. No, that's fair. Um, We have one more that we have a date for, and then one more that we don't have a date for. The one that we have a date for is coming out on Christmas Eve. So crowd around your TVs, (laughs) open up your Netflix, and start the new classic that is A Thousand Miles from Christmas, also known as A Thousand Kilometers de la, Nava- de la, Na- de la Navidad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Christmas Eve. Um, a comedy that tells the story of Raul, a 30-something who has uh, suffered all the misfortunes of his life during Christmas time. Well, that's unfortunate. This is the reason why he really hates Christmas carols. The Three Wise Men. Wow, you hate the Three Wise Men, bold. Uh, and everything that remotely smells of Christmas spirit. Every year he spends Christmas time on a faraway beach, but this year his boss has different plans for him. Raul must attend a business trip to audit uh, the factory of things. What does that translate to, Alonzo? Turrones de Valverde. Um, Turron is a really popular Spanish candy that you see, especially at the holidays. And uh, there's a hard, which is kind of like a brick of like almond brittle, I guess would be the best way to describe it. And then there's the soft, which is more sort of an almond like peanut butter but denser and that you can Mm. slice into squares i'm a big turon fan either way so okay well it is a uh, christmas uh, candy factory that the town lives for and loves christmas and uh, if this was not enough for raul he will have to share accommodations with a local teacher paula whose dream is beating the world record for the largest real live nativity scene ever created um will this Madrillion Grinch be able to overcome his worst nightmare. I will go and I will say I'm very intrigued by this movie. It, it is like um, the Grinch meets Willy Wonka at Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to go four peppermint mochas and I'm going to use a cream, my fourth cream on this movie. Jax. You know, so I am... I like candy. I'm intrigued by Raul. I usually prefer my light Christmas rom-coms to be female-led, which is not to say that there's anything wrong with the man being the the leading man of the story and that we're following him as main character. I just am less intrigued by that. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go with three. But uh, Raul, if I'm going to follow a man, Roll sounds good to me. (laughs) Uh, You know what? I take back what I said before. This one is also going to be five mochas and a cream for me. Whoa! Because it is, this this is because it's not just Spanish. This is like hella Spanish. Like if, if Turon plays a key role here and you've got a small town that's putting on a nativity scene, by the way, Brand, the reason they mentioned the three Kings is because until creeping Westernism brought Santa into Spain, children in Spain would write letters every year to the three wise men to bring them presents and that wow. they would open the presents on epiphany on January 6th, sure. the, like the, which is the 12th day of Christmas. Right. So um, that's 
Spain being super Catholic, that's that was their thing for a long time. Was that you, would, you would write Los Reyes Católicos to, to get presents uh, at Christmas time. So yeah, this just reeks of my people, and I'm here for it. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> It does. Am I right though? Grinch meets Willy Wonka. Yeah, like, with, a, with with a little Kringle thrown in. Yeah, because uh, because the guy from corporate has to come to the town, and you know, I'm very intrigued by this movie. Christmas Eve, though, that's tough. Uh, well, again, you know, I think I think for the Spanish market, Christmas is just getting rolling. That's at that true. Point. That's so, true. You know, but but yeah, for us, it's like it seems late in the game. I no, think. that's a great point. It's like the kickoff to the twelve days of Christmas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice. Uh, then we have, uh, go, I'm sorry, uh, Jax, were you going to say Oh, something? no, no, just like, I I don't, the Netflix scheduling is so different uh, from the way they roll out content than the other, because they, it's always, it lives there. So that's why I was curious. Oh, that's true, too, you, yeah. You just answered that, Alonzo, that that makes perfect sense why this one is so late in the game, even though it sounds like it's going to be a good one. So, yeah, yes. yeah, th- it is very interesting. Like they just, they release things on days and it's just like, this is the day we're doing it. So, yeah. so good luck. Um, and then we have a, uh, how, how, how would you say that? A Nyjah, uh, Nyjah Christmas. It's coming out sometime in December. We don't know the stars, but we do know that three sons race to fulfill their mother's wish to bring home wives for Christmas while she battles uh, to plan a Christmas celebration she will always be remembered for. This sounds like potentially mom is passing away, maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, heading towards death. I don't know. It, it's just what it sounds like. It's they're they're trying to fulfill their mother's with wish, and she is uh, doing putting a party together that she wants to be remembered for. It has kind of those uh, those phrases. So I don't know. I'm intrigued. I don't have enough information to get really excited about it. Um, but uh, yes, I'm intrigued. So I will go uh, three. Just my middle of the road three. No creams. Intrigued. Uh, peppermint mocha. Jax. Uh Two, I'm not super big on things that push marriage. That's fair. <laughs> uh, even though I think it's a lovely commitment and I, it's wonderful, but I, two right now, but like I'll, I could easily be swayed by like a tour de force performance of a potentially dying mom. So we'll see. But it could be like three like fake wives. Like it could be a fake situation just to make mom happy type of thing. And not not them actually like getting married just to make mom happy. We could get that. Yeah, that could be fun. I mean, yes. I just it it just is still for me not one of those where I go, "Mm, okay. I I I hear you. I hear you. You know, a dying mom at Christmas is a potential minefield for sure. I'm a dummy, and I had to. I just had to Google this, and of course, now it makes complete sense. Nija is slang abbreviation for Nigerian, so Ah. this is actually an African-based Christmas movie, and I've never seen one. So that's exciting. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have in, in all of my time looking at holiday films. I don't think I've ever seen one that is that takes place in Africa. So oh, wait, can I take back what I said? Then <laughs> I was picturing a bunch of people who looked like me doing this, and I'm very uninterested in watching a bunch of people who look like me do this. But now hearing that, I actually want to pump it up to. For peppermint mocha, not out of a sense of like false political correctness, but just like I've seen a bunch of people who look like me do this. I have also not seen a Nigerian Christmas movie, so thank you for that insight. Sure, Alonso. yeah, no, I'm I'm also for, and I get it. Here, like, okay, for years I was a programmer for a, a gay film festival, and you know the coming out movie wore out its welcome. We'd seen it a million yeah. times, whatever. But then you start getting those movies from like. Bermuda or South Korea or like places in the world that didn't really have up to that point, any kind of gay cinema heritage or history. And so for them, that was sort of their opening salvo. So the first one they make is going to be this kind of familiar thing. And so because we aren't getting a ton of Nigerian Christmas movies, at least in the United States, if this one hues to plot lines, we think we know, or we're familiar with, that's a good way to, to throw us into something where, 
plot elements we recognize, but other contextual stuff that's going to be new to us. So I'm a lot more forgiving when uh, uh, when an area of the world that hasn't made a million of these movies before makes one that might sound a little familiar as opposed to, I agree with you, this same plot on Up TV. I'd be like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, totally. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Sure. Uh, and that'll do it for uh, the movies. We are uh, we're, we're going to be done for the day. We're going to come back next week um, and we're going to talk about the TV world of Netflix because Netflix does TV shows. Holiday does, bake off, baby. That's exactly right. And I will say, very excited to talk about the TV, but there's also some tough news to share that Alonzo and I will get to next week in regards to Netflix TV shows um, and a certain thing we don't see on the schedule. Indeed. Indeed. Oh. Jax doesn't know what we're talking about because she doesn't know like Netflix in, Christmas stuff. I'm, in, I'm intrigued, though. Yes, yes, you should be. But that holds uh, you until next time. That's exactly right. So we'll be back next week. Until then, it would be the first to wish you a Merry Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live. And yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray. Set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. For more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free, you can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.